It's all quiet on the western seafront these days. It wasn't always like this. 20 years ago, a gang of teenagers from a local housing estate terrorised the beaches. No bank holiday passed without a battle. They were called the Squad. I knew them in their heyday, all fanatical about Bristol Rovers, all mad, bad and dangerous to know. The stories are well documented by the press, police and the courts. But what about their own stories? Budgie, Daffy, Mountain, Sweat, Wally, oh and Tone. The characters are as vivid now as they were 20 years ago. The squad members all came from the notorious Bourneville estate. Isolated from the town of Weston by the two main railway lines to the west. An estate full of bored young men. As luck would have it, I got the chance to come back 20 years later to listen to their stories and look back on those infamous days. top club in Birmingham, expecting Western Supermare to be somewhere quite quiet. I was quickly enlightened that it wasn't, and um, it was just as bad as where I'd come from in the inner city. Well, it all started back in 74, 75, back at school. It was um, Wally Vowles, Pagey, he's, he's dead now. He had an accident at work, uh, daft and sweat. The youngsters down here were considered to be quite uh, beyond control. But in, in the main, it's been my belief that um, Bourneville is not as bad as it's painted. Certainly from a youth club point of view, um, it wasn't as bad as some people thought. The club was just locked up on by the youngsters as a refuge, but unfortunately by the people who lived in the locality as a place where all the troublemakers gathered. We all lived on the Bournemouth together. We had generations of different gangs. It was, I mean, my brother was a skinhead. He was a few years older than me. He had his gangs and we used to just mix in together. I mean, the squad used to knock around with my lot. Okay, that was, not the biker big gang I used to knock around with, but I used to always knock around with the skinheads as well, funny enough. The frightening thing I can always remember was my mum shouting across the shops and telling me to get home. Because my mum was terrible. <laughs> Stop hanging around them shops. Get home. Shortly before I got uh, sort of integrated with the squad, the states used to fight the states, the Bourneville used to fight the Mixon and the Bourneville used to come down to Whirl and fight the Whirl lads and vice versa. And then all of a sudden it, it changed and the Bourneville lads uh, started recruiting people from other parts of, of Western. I got into the, the skinhead uh, thing, I got my head shaved and uh, basically I got recruited in and uh, I was a full time member then. I moved from Clavram down here, it's a totally different way of life. So I just got learned to go with it. I either be hardened or you just get pushed on all the time. So in the end, I just come to come you know, where I was. And where I was at there, I had guns and bikes and everything else. And when I come here, it just totally ruined me life because my father took everything away from me. You're not allowed to have it because it's a tank. So in the end, I just rebelled against everything. The squad started off. We had, I don't know, all the schools, like Whirl, Wyvern, Broadoak, I think it happens everywhere in the country. We always have a little rumble with different schools and whatever. And if that happens, we all sort of left the school at the same time and we all ended up in town. So come the end of it all, we just all joined together. And uh, basically then the music started and that's 
really when we all turned skinhead. I always used to carry a camera with me. I used to have a special pocket in my jean jacket and I slid it in. A 110 camera because you could carry it everywhere. No one could see it and you could just pull it out on certain moments and no one would know nothing about it. And uh, I took some good shots with it. A typical bank holiday Monday would be like, go over the shops, meet up there about nine, half nine, maybe have a kick about with a football or whatever for a half hour or so till everyone's ready, like, get about eight, ten, maybe twelve of you over the shops, like, over the social club for a few cheap ciders because that was dynamite fuel. No matter, I don't care what anyone says, that social club cider was the strongest in town. And we'd get over there and, and like we'd meet up with another six to a dozen or whatever. And then it'd be stroll into town, maybe via the Ancaster, depends which way we went. But we used to go into Ancaster quite regular after a while because the police banned us from the social club. In fact, they told the social club to stop serving us cider. So we all had to go to the Anc and I had to pay an extra 10p a pint which was murder. <laughs> we got three million miles to reach on the moon. So let's start getting happy. When we actually got to town, we'd, we'd all sort of like go in the Globe, or the Cavi, which was a Cavendish Inn, or the Anchor, meet up with the Anchor animals. They were a berserk bunch of animals as well. <laughs> they were a bit more mental than us. I didn't want as many of them. <laughs> And then, like two o'clock, pubs are shut. Some people would have shot off during the afternoon and got a few gallons of screeching to the beach. They would head down the lawns, unless there was a drinking competition in Max's, and we'd go and steam into that. Drink all the beer, fill in a few bikers. <laughs> and then head to the lawns then, and that was just wait and see what, what was going on, like, you know? After the pub shut, we'd go out and to the cider farm, get some cider, and turn out on the seafront. You'd have coach loads of brummies and Bristol kids or whatever, like you know, they'd all come down having a having having a drink themselves, and we'd be shouting things across. They'd be doing the same, and then we'd just go for it in the middle. Until the law come along or whatever, and we usually be the ones that get arrested because the police knew us, like so. We'd be the ones that arrested, and they'd usually get away with everything. Like that. <laughs> 16 News appeared before Western Super Mayor magistrates this morning, and fines of up to £300 have been imposed. Getting fined that much is just going to make them go out and nick stuff and sell it to pay off their fines. A lot of the lads did uh, time, they did got Borstal, etc. etc. Me, me, I was lucky, I had a good, I had a full time job at the time. And I just pay, ended up paying up thousands of pounds in fines to them over years. I'd love to know where it went. I think the best one was um, there must have been 50, 60 of us over on the bingo steps opposite the amusements. We all decided that we we're going to go down to the um, Smith's Hotel where all the Brummy skinheads were. There's about 100 of them down there. And uh, we met, in, met up with these 10 or 15 Bristol blokes, 20 Bristol blokes, whatever. And. Uh, decided that we were going to do the Brummies together. So we all steamed into Smith's Hotel, kicked the crap out of the Brummies. And on the way back along the beach, we kicked the shit out of the Bristol blokes. And that's when the police were chasing us along the beach on horses. The police started quite a fair bit of the trouble, I'd say. Going in too heavy. Even on days when nothing happened, the old bill would be there pushing. And I'm not talking about just us, I'm talking about ordinary pedestrians on the street, like, you know? pushing them all along the seafront to try and get them over onto the beach. 
everyone was piling over the wall because the police was trying to push everyone away like from the sea from the seafront to get them on here out of the way. So uh, that's when we all jumped over the walls and whatever. They had a, like all the Bristol lot was behind the police and they segregated both lots. So uh, that's how come we ended up on here that fateful day. It was really terrifying for everybody, for them, for the donkeys, the horses, and all the public with their little kiddies. They come on the beaches, they come about 400 at a time, and they would just make one run all the way and scream and shout. <laughs>